So now that you've finished configuring the Nano through the HTML browser interface, go ahead and open up your VNC connection to the gauge or use the front panel of the Nano. They will function exactly the same. So if you're doing this remotely, you can use the VNC connection. If you're standing in front of the console, just use the touchscreen. So I'm going to open up my VNC connection, type in my IP address, and if you have multiple nanos that you want to, to look at later on, it will actually give you the drop down with all of the IP addresses to each one of the nanos. So I only have the one that I'm using right now configured, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the IP address and hit OK. So this is what we've configured. We've configured four tanks in this uh, particular nano. And what we're looking at is the default screen for inventory. You get to see the four tanks that we configured earlier uh, through the HTML browser interface. The Nano has the capability of holding 12 tanks. If you have more than six tanks on the first screen, you will actually see six till whatever up to 12 in this upper right corner. So what we have is the calendar, a list view, reports, and settings. So to finish the programming, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the settings tab, open this up, and the default password is 12345. I'm going to go ahead and enter the default password, and you'll see that we'll come into what's known as a privilege mode in the system. Now this is where you're going to set up some of the reports, how the gauge functions, tank test, that kind of thing. So when you're looking at it, the first thing you want to do is come to system settings. This is where you can go ahead and change the network configurations, your date, your times. You can do a cold start, do some other configurations. So let's go ahead and set the date and the time. And basically it's just a matter of selecting the block and then you can go ahead and adjust your times up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and set the, the time to my current time now. And then if you just click on the AM and automatically toggle over and then hit set, I'm going to come in and change my date. And hit set. So once you do that, now you've adjusted the date and time in the console. I can come into the networks tab. Remember how we had the ability to set your static DHCP and um, address in the HTML? You also have the same in the actual touchscreen of the console. So if the IP address or you switch it to DHCP, you can go ahead and do that from the front screen. You don't have to bring out your laptop to, to go ahead and connect to it. You have the ability to do the cold start. So if you touch the icon, it'll go ahead and say, do you want to reset it to factory data reset? You just hit yes. And I'll go ahead. I'm going to do no. If you go to the configurations tab, you have the ability to do a software upgrade, a backup, or a restore. If you hit the upgrade button, it's going to be looking for the software on a USB key. If you back it up, it's going to back it up to the micro SD card. And then if you do a factory restore or database restore, it's going to go back and look at the micro SD card that's mounted on the, the main board of the Nano to actually back up the configuration. And then you can restore it back. So if you're doing a main board swap out, it's easy to just grab the back up the data, grab the micro SD card out of the, the main board, put it in a new main board, put the micro SD card back into the new main board, and then go ahead and do a restore from the micro SD card back into the synchronous RAM. If I go to the others tab, this is how you want the main screen to, to function. There's a backlight, so basically after five minutes, the screen will go dark. You touch the screen, it'll come back, and as long as you're actively touching the screen, It'll go ahead and stay lit, but after five minutes of inactivity, it'll go dark. Uh, this setting can be changed. I can change the password. The default is 12345. If I want to change that, it's just a matter of clicking in the block. Go ahead and put in the new password up to five characters, and then hit enter. And then the logout timeout is if you want it to automatically log you out of the privilege mode, after five minutes of inactivity and you can go up to 20 minutes in your login. If you change any of these settings just go ahead and hit save and then you can go ahead save successfully is okay. From the system settings tab we're going to go to shift and site. 
Now what this screen does for you, it has the ability to save inventory, open and close the site, and also select the end of day as well as running shift reports. Now the saved inventory, I can do up to three of them. But what this does is it saves the inventory at a given time during the day so that if I miss the printout or I miss the email, I can always go back and retrieve that particular inventory from previous days. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to select the first saved inventory, and I'm going to set this one for 6 a.m. And hit set. I only want to save it for 6 a.m., but I, but I do have the ability to save two other inventories. So we do our site open at 4 a.m., and we'll do our site close at midnight. So I'll go ahead and let's set our site close to midnight. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to bring it up to 12, set it for 12 a.m., and then hit set. End of day is going to be set to 10 p.m., and then I hit save. So that's going to save my one inventory, have my site open and close at 4 a.m. and close at midnight, and then have my end of day running at 10 p.m. Now the bottom half of the screen is my shift reports. Now the shift reports are a little tricky because they work on a 24-hour clock. If I have one shift and I select it to start at 4 a.m., It's set. I can have it where I run an end of day at 12 a.m. or at midnight, and that will run one shift. Now, if I do a shift report from 4 a.m. to, let's say, noon, then it will automatically calculate that report, which is going to give you your beginning inventory, your ending inventory for 4 a.m., 12 noon, and then any deliveries that you had for that period. But notice how it will automatically give you another start time and bring you from noon back to 4 a.m. The shifts have to be in a 24-hour period. So then you have the option of setting these to print automatically. And if you do that, then go ahead and hit Save. From your Shift and Site tab, we'll go into Intank Auto Leak Test Settings. The next tab we want to do is the in-tank auto leak test settings. So when I highlight that tab, what it's going to give me is the recurrence pattern of an auto leak test. I have the ability to run this test either daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. Daily it's going to attempt to try to run this test at least once a day. If I select weekly, it's going to try to run it at least once every 7 days. Monthly is once every 27 days and then yearly is once every 363 days. Now I can go ahead and change this leak test warning period, but the maximum number that I can have is 363 days. And the reason why we do this is so that you have the ability to try to run a manual tank test if the auto leak test is not successful. So if I come back to daily, I can set the duration that I want to two hours, and what it's gonna look for is two hours of inactivity in that tank, to be able to perform an auto leak test. If it doesn't, it'll just continue trying the next day. If I set it to weekly, it'll try to run it at least every six to seven days. If I don't get one within six days, it will set off a warning to let me know that I have to try to run that test manually. And then I have the minimum volume. Well, when we were programming the, the tank configuration, we set this to 50%. I can come in here and change this if I want to, but the fact that I've set this up in the tank configuration, it knows that's the preference that I want. But it's just the default that we do from the configuration and it's carried over in the screen. Once you set everything for daily, weekly, or monthly, go ahead and hit save. Now I have all the tanks selected, so it's going to set this reoccurrence pattern for all the tanks. So if you don't want to have the gauge try to do the test on its own, you do have the ability to go ahead and run a static leak test on demand. That's under your in-tank static leak test. So we'll go ahead and hit that button, and then if you have the option of either running it now or running it later. If I hit run now, I select the duration that I want to run, two hours, hit set, 
minimum volume that I want to run and then go ahead and hit save. If I hit save at this point it will go ahead and try to run a 0.2 gallon in tank leak test. If I want to run it later go ahead and hit the run later button I can still select the duration that I want it to run the product level that I want it to run at but then I get to schedule its date and time so if I don't want it today I can go ahead and set it for the 25th of May hit set and then let's say I want it to run at midnight so I'm gonna go ahead and set this to run at midnight now that we finished configuring tank number one you can go ahead and configure tanks two three and four the remaining tanks that you have at your location don't forget to hit the save button after you configure each one of the tanks if I want to look at the in tank leak status I'll go ahead and hit that tab now this is a history this is going to show you every one of the tanks well right now I have the filter selected that I have all tanks selected if I just want to see the history for tank number one I come in I select none I come back in and highlight tank number one and it will automatically filter your screen to only show you the results for tank number one if I want to see tanks one and three I just highlight tank number three you know only show me the history for those two tanks if I want to select them all I just go back and select all of the tanks, and it will repopulate this screen with every one of the tank tests that you run now you have the ability to arrow up and down and it'll only store so many tank tests in memory before it starts auto deleting them out shift details is the last tab that we have this is where you set up your shifts on the original site this is where you would actually go in and see the information for your shifts but you have to set up this information in the shift and site informations tab to be able to see the information in your shift details now version is just that it's just the version of software that we're running and in this version we're running application 1.10 build one and it gives you the information so if somebody from the office is looking for the version of software that you're running this is what they're asking for this completes the configuration module for the nano if you have any questions please refer back to your configuration manual for any information that you need on the installation and configuration of the nano console the nano console